The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Welcome to Noonday Prayer. Thank you so much for joining me. My name's Chris and I'm a member of St John's. Our focus today is the Transfiguration. An account of Jesus' Transfiguration on the Mount is included in each of the first three Gospels and in each one it serves as an epiphany a manifestation of the truth that Jesus is not only the messenger of salvation, but also the saving message itself. Jesus took Peter, James and John up a mountain where they beheld his figure clothed in dazzling glory and his conference with Moses and Elijah. Moses was the servant of God who received the divine covenant and delivered it to Israel, while the prophet Elijah was expected to come again and inaugurate the end of the ages, when Israel will be restored and vindicated in the sight of all the nations. The vision of Jesus conversing with these two figures revealed that he was the third founder of Israel, and as God's very son, the fulfilment of all the promises made in the law and the prophets. The transfiguration also foreshadowed the still greater event of the resurrection and it gave a foresight of what salvation and the life of glory would be like. The evangelists all began their accounts of the transfiguration by focusing on Jesus' clothing. It was not stripped off him as it would be at the crucifixion. Instead, it was almost unbearably enhanced. St. Paul would pick up on this image in his second letter to the Corinthians, where he spoke of the Christian hope in these terms. While we are in this earthly tent, we sigh with anxiety. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Elsewhere, he would speak of putting on Christ and of being clothed with Christ. Salvation then, will not be a stripping away of what makes us human, but a donning of the vesture of glory. And the vesture of the blessed will be nothing other than the, the life of the risen Christ himself. Our Psalm today is Psalm 99. The Lord is King. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the goodness and the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies 
and the decree that he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Let us pray. Almighty God, on the holy mount, you revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world and change us into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The first reading is from Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 to 10 and 13 to 14. And I'm going to be using a contemporary translation from the message. As I watched, thrones were set in place and the old ones sat down. His robes were white as snow. His hair was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, its wheels blazing. A river of fire poured out of the throne. Thousands upon thousands served him. Tens of thousands attended him. The courtroom was called to order and the books were opened. I kept watching. The little horn was speaking arrogantly. Then as I watched, the monster was killed and its body cremated in a roaring fire. The other animals lived on for a limited time but they didn't really do anything, had no power to rule. My dream continued. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. About eight days after saying this, he climbed the mountain to pray, taking Peter, John and James along. While he was in prayer, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became blinding white. At once two men were there talking with him. They turned out to be Moses and Elijah. And what a glorious appearance they made. They talked over his exodus, the one Jesus was about to complete in Jerusalem. Meanwhile, Peter and those with him were slumped over in sleep. When they came to rubbing their eyes, they saw Jesus 
in his glory and the two men standing with him. When Moses and Elijah had left, Peter said to Jesus, Master, this is a great moment. Let's build three memorials, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking. While he was babbling on like this, a light radiant cloud enveloped them. As they found themselves buried in the cloud, they became deeply aware of God. Then there was a voice out of the cloud. This is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. When the sound of the voice died away, they saw Jesus there alone. They were speechless and they continued speechless, said not one thing to anyone during those days of what they had seen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. And now, a response from Dame Osyth of West Malling Abbey. To the mountain, apart with his own, Christ has come. As the servant, God seeking, and the word, the light giver, in flesh, imminent. On his prayer, light and glory break forth. Light that conquered of old the dark chaos, the void. Light that unquenched cleaves the Passover night. Law and prophets fulfilled in the Christ, there have part. For the dead and the living shall in him enter glory, attain exodus. By transcendent, transfiguring sign, Christ's disciples have known the beloved, the Son. Keep your church, Christ seeing none save the Lord. Let us join in affirming God's self-revelation as we say together the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen.
And now an act of repentance. This is a true saying and worthy by all to be received. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us bring to mind those times in our lives when we have failed God, God's love and God's will for our lives. When we have failed God's image in ourselves and in others. And when we have failed God's call to be good stewards of creation. And in a moment of silence, let us ask God for the forgiveness of our sins. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Christe eleison, Christ have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. May God, our true Father and our true Mother, through the power of the Holy Spirit, forgive us our sins, welcome us home once again, protect us against all evil, heal what is broken in us and through us, and lead us to everlasting life and eternal bliss through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and teach her counsellors wisdom. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Give your people the blessing of peace and may all the earth be filled with your glory. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit with us. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where the Father and the Holy Spirit and you live and reign now and forever. Amen. And now let's think about 
the world and all those situations that we see in the news that have worried us or made us think about people who are in different places or situations that concern us and let's bring them now to God in prayer. We'll take a few moments of silence and I'll guide us through different suggested topics. Let us pray. Pray for our world and for those who hold responsibility and in positions of authority. We pray that there'll be people of integrity and will guide us in the right directions for the benefit of everyone. Remember the countries affected by COVID-19 and our own country and all those working so hard to try and help us get through this difficulty. Remember those who are struggling. Financially. Emotionally. Those who have lost loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and bring healing to our world. Lord, we pray for the church and for all who lead worship everywhere in the world. We pray for our Bishop John and Mark, our Primus. And we pray for the congregations just beginning to gather again. And we thank you, Lord, for all the ways in which we've been able to connect and get to know one another in a different way. Help us as we move forward through the uncertainty. Give us courage and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And we remember, Lord, all those people who are dear to us, our family, our friends, especially those who are far away. We entrust them to your care. We remember those who are sick in mind, body or spirit. And especially those who are close to death. We 
especially those who can't see their loved ones yet. And are struggling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who mourn, who have died. May they know the wonderful glory of being in your presence. We thank you today for this glimpse of life beyond. In this highlight of the transfiguration. And we thank you for all the highlights in our own lives. And those who have guided us and helped us in our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this time together and ask that you accept our prayers in the name of Jesus, who was transfigured. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. <laughs>